live on Instagram. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook. Checking connections. Never know how long it's going to take. Okay, here we are. Happy Saturday, October 8th. Um, I'm up excited about the ladies meeting today, the ladies day at Williamson Church. I'm excited to see some people I probably haven't seen since last time at ladies day. But praise God that once a year. It's going to be a good day. It is going to be a good day. And then I get in here and open the Devo up, and we're going to talk about reading the Word. Read the Word, it says, forever, O Lord, your Word is settled in heaven. Woo! In Psalm 119, verse 89. Psalm 119 is the psalm. It is the long psalm. It is the psalm that gets all in your business and my business and David's business and everybody's business. And it is so, so good, so edifying, so humbling, so, so good. <clears throat> so good, and there's so much of it. Delight in God's Word. Delight in God's Word is the heading for the entire chapter. Um, it's just amazing. It is just amazing. So, and it's a long one, like I said. I probably won't, although it's short verses in Psalms, but it is, it's like three, four, or five pages, whereas most of them are, what, a half a page, a column, so anyway, but how good is his word? Read the word is the title, and like I said in my caption on the video, let the word read you, let the word read you, get in there, don't, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, you have to set your pride aside, because your pride is going to want to argue with the word because, like I said, the word gets in your business and the word shows you what some of those uppity better than you Christians have probably been trying to tell you. You're going to find out they're right. They may have not come about it in the right way. I've been accused of one myself and sure I'm guilty at times. Um, we're just excited and enthused about the word, guys. We've been where you are and we want you to come dive in. Um, to this word and let it read you let it transform you the transformation is incredible <laughs> it's incredible y'all look at me there's people still on my Facebook and Instagram that know that this is not who I was three or four years ago now if you're still in the world you probably like to at me better and that's understandable but 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 that me that me Oh, that me was trying to store up treasures here that were going to get destroyed. And that me didn't have much waiting in heaven. But now, but God. So, 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 so. In fact, that me thought, thought she was on her way to heaven because she was listening to the world's way of getting there and not the true way that the word gives us. Now I know. Now I know how much to be thankful for. Now I know God let me see the truth and the light. Anyways, let's see what Billy Graham has to say about Psalm 11989. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. At the end of the day, that is that. That is that. That is that. We have our offenses and our 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 feelings and our things that we want to, like I said, argue with God about. We say, but if he was such a good God, and you know, you don't get to decide what good is. You don't get to decide who God is. Um, it's settled in heaven. It is settled. It. He was before all. The end all be all. And you know it. Somewhere deep down inside of you, you know it. But you want to find all these arguments and excuses. And I hope you don't think you're going to go before his throne with that stuff. When we have a whole book. You knew I was going to lift it up and show you. We have a whole book that tells us otherwise. So come on. Come on. Come on. You may have heard the expression, he or she is a walking Bible. It is a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing to hide the word of God in our heart. It helps us along the pathway of life. It is important, though, to back it up with our lives. There you go. That's the part where you let it read you. That's the part where you 
act accordingly. You can't change the scriptures to fit your narrative, but you can change your narrative to fit the scripture, to align with the word of God. What better partnership could you possibly be trying to cook up than to align with the creator of all, with the God in heaven, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the bright morning star, the great I am. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, I wish I could just make you feel what I feel and know what I know. Praise God. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be here with his word, doing my best. Doing my best to convince you. Read God's word with reverence, for he is holy. He is a holy God. We we want to familiar, familiarize them. That word just halfway came out before I... Is that familiarize? I mean, we do. We do grow familiar to God. But what I'm saying is like we want to make it comfortable. We want to bring him down instead of letting him bring us up, right? Um, like he's our homie. He is a holy God. A holy God. And that's why our sin can't can't go where he is. And that is why he loved us so much. Loves us. It's it's permanent. It's present. It's not past tense. Loves us so much infinitely that he made a way. He made a way out for us. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Read it with dependence on the Holy Spirit who will open your understanding. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I used to be that one that said, I don't read it because I don't understand it. But really, my flesh didn't want it to get in there and ruin all my fun I thought I was having. And that's what it does. It convicts. It convicts. It shows you where you're wrong. It shows you how to correct it. And the Holy Spirit makes it so doable. So doable. He's there at every turn. He's there at every decision. God always makes a way out. He always gives you a way out. A way to make the right decision. Um, read it with expectancy. Believing God will speak to you. Because he will. He will. He is God. He can speak to you any way he wants to. But don't tell me that he can speak to you in the club as well. Yeah, but what does he want to go there for? Why are you going somewhere Jesus doesn't want to be? You're grieving the Holy Spirit if he, if he is with you by taking him to those places. Get off that fence. Get off that fence and be on fire for the Lord. Read it in obedience so you can put it into action. That part, that part, that part. Put it into action. Read and memorize as much as possible so it will always be with you. Read it in prayer so its words will strengthen your faith. Read it and pass it on as a testimony to what God has done for you. Exactly. Exactly. Because when you get in there and you start seeing you on those pages and him on those pages, and the beautiful way that he made for the two to come together on those pages. And every example, everything you could possibly go through on those pages. And how you are to react, how you are to respond. Um, it's undeniable, folks. It's undeniable. It's unbelievable. He is so, so good. Pass it on as a testimony to what God has done for you. I think I already said this the other day, but it bears repeating because it's just awesome. And I may have actually said it to somebody at work instead of here. Um, I heard a testimony of a guy the other day who was basically, you know, like gangbanger, hood, I don't know, um, big city, um, ride or die type of guy, I guess, you know, all up into that stuff. And... And Jesus met him where he was and changed him. He had witnessed um, somebody getting killed, I think it was, or hurt really bad, or however, it brought his attention to the fact that if it had been him, where would he be now? Where would he have gone? And he cried out to God. So anyways, my point of that is he said... <laughs> 
that at first he didn't jump straight into the Bible, but he was communing with the Lord. He knew for sure. And when he got in the Bible, he started seeing things in there that he'd already been experiencing in this walk with Jesus. And that right there is exactly what I'm talking about. I think it's what Billy Graham's talking about. You start seeing yourself in there. You realize it was written for you and for me and for all of us. You see the truth. You see the truth. There's only God in his Holy Spirit and in his word can show you. It's incredible, y'all. It's incredible. I mean, look at what it's done to me. <laughs> like I said, you may have liked me better before. That's okay. Come on out of there. Come on out of the darkness and into the light. Into the light. I don't think anybody is up with me on this Saturday morning, and that's okay. Let me look down at my thing and see. Okay, there's someone up. Probably someone else getting ready to, um... <laughs> Probably someone else getting ready to uh, to go to the ladies' day, I hope. Anyways, let's finish this. Read and pass it on. Okay, I said that three times, I think. It is a joy to carry in our hands <clears throat> Excuse me. the blessed scripture and to know where to find various passages. But one day he is coming soon to carry us into his everlasting light where we will be in the very present presence of the word eternal. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we won't need the book. We'll still have it on our hearts, but we'll also be in its presence, in his presence eternally eternally then all those hard decisions will be the best decisions they'll be the best decisions you ever made now because he will prove himself he will be faithful now you don't have to wait till then for for all the glory you don't have to wait for the end till the end for all the reward um, for all the goodness for the abundant life it can begin right now today right now today do you have reverence for the Bible? Yes. So much so that I used to wouldn't even write in it. But now, now this one is my newer one and it doesn't have any writing in it. But my old study Bible, my one that I've studied the longest and most is underlined and highlighted and side notes and circles and all kinds of stuff. But I do have reverence for it. It is the eternal, living, breathing Word of God. Every bit of it is inspired by God. He wrote it with human hands um, for our edification and our salvation, our abundant life. The, all the answers are in there. I mean, literally every, everything, everything, everything. Um, it's the it's when you pick it up and you're not willing to to accept that answer over the answer you already concluded for yourself that you want to put it down and stop but don't just keep seeking him and keep diving into that word it will transform you he will he will use his power his spirit his word his truth to overcome those weaknesses in you and he will transform you to his likeness more and more every day. He will give you a new heart and an upright spirit within you. <sighs> There's not even words. There's not even words for how terrific it is, for how incredible it is. But, um, you know, I wouldn't lie to you, right? <laughs> so, 119. I'm going to go read some of it because I just can't resist. Um, let me see what I'm working with on time 748 yep it is almost time for me to go but I can read a few verses I don't think I ever do connect that to my I will we'll get that in a minute okay so like I said the the heading title whatever for the whole chapter is delight in God's word so how happy are those whose way is blameless who walk according to the Lord's instruction. 
Happy are those who keep his decrees and seek him with all their heart. Not just seek him when you want something. Not just seek him when you need a way out of the mess. Um, yes, do those. Do those. Seek him at all times. Seek him when things are good. Seek him before you seek anything or anyone else. Seek him. Um, the rewards are amazing. The fellowship is amazing. The the life, the the simplest of lives can be made so abundant by the presence of God. It doesn't take all the stuff. It takes Him. It's the only way. It is the only way to fulfillment, period. And He made us that way. And, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. He is God. And He alone is God. They do nothing wrong. They walk in His ways. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. If only my ways were committed to keeping your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I think about all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Never abandon me. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping your word. By keeping your word. You can. The world will tell you you can't. That it's bound to happen. Oh, they're going to, boys will be boys. Girls will be girls. Whatever. No. It doesn't have to be that. Is it hard? Yes. But it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. And it's all right here. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping your word. I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Lord, may you be blessed. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I proclaim all the judgments from your mouth. Did you catch that? All that don't, don't you can't judge me, don't judge me. I'm not. But the God, the, the God of the universe, the Lord of all has judged. He has set in, in place the righteous judgments. And, you know, when we say that's wrong, that's not okay, God does not accept that, or however it might be worded, that's His judgments. With my lips, I proclaim all the judgments from your mouth. It's warning. It's a warning out of love. It's, it's taken as hate today because the world sees evil as good instead and sees good as evil but that's not the case that's not the case with the judgments of God and the word of God they are righteous he is a holy God and he has a righteous and holy plan for every one of us every one of us I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees as much as all as in all riches I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal generously with your servant so that I might live. Then I will keep your word. Open my eyes so that I may contemplate wondrous things from your instruction. I am a resident alien on earth. <laughs> Do not hide your commands from me. I am continually overcome with longing for your judgments. You rebuke the arrogant, the ones under a curse. The arrogant, the ones under a curse. Catch that. And God, God can reverse the curse, no matter what it is. Who wander from your commands. That was me. That was me. Take insult and contempt away from me, for I have kept your decrees. Though princes sit together speaking against me, your servant will think about your statutes. Your decrees are my delight and my counselors. And you know today, it may not be princes, it may be governors, it may be the president, it may be a king or a queen somewhere. But there are people in high-seated ranks Um speaking against God's people looking for a way to
to defeat God's people. To defeat God. They want to live their way. They want to follow their flesh. And are, are doing a pretty good job of it, unfortunately. But come on, church, rise up. Rise up. We can follow our God all the more stronger because greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world and their wicked ways. So, but yeah, they're sitting in high places talking bad about us and plotting against us. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. But we know we've read the end of the book, right? So... My life is down in the dust. Give me life through your word. I told you about my life, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. This was me, too. Mm. I almost quoted without even, and that's what I was talking about. You get in, you'll have your encounter. You'll have your moments where you know God is speaking to you. He's making things clear to you. He's revealing himself to you because you're seeking him um, in most cases. You know, Paul wasn't seeking him, and he chose Paul. So there are those. But in my case, and in many cases that I'm aware of, seeking him in desperation leads to this. And this is, like I said, you get, you have your moment, you have your encounter or encounters, and then you get in the Word, and it's right there on the page. And it's like, that's exactly what happened to me. That's exactly what he did for me. So anyway... Help me understand the meaning of your precepts so that I can meditate on your wonders. I am weary from grief. Also me, several times in the last few years. Weary from grief. Strengthen me through your word and oh my has he, has he ever. Keep me from the way of deceit and graciously give me your instruction. I have chosen the way of truth. Yes, I have, Lord. These psalms are so good to just pray through. Oh, I have set your ordinances before me. I cling to your decrees. Lord, do not put me to shame. I pursue the way of your commands, for you broaden my understanding. And this, I mean, this happens. This happens as you seek, as you get deep in his word and you seek him and his presence and his truth. Um, and you'll cling, cling to him. Clinging to him is better than clinging to anything else, right? Or anyone else. But you'll have to because nobody around you might understand what the heck you, what has come over them. Um, if they're not already there, if they're not already in there. And even if they are, they may not be at that same place. And so he has his way of bringing us unto himself and teaching us to depend and rely entirely and to cling entirely to him. And it's beautiful. And you realize that that's all you need. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who else turns their back um, or whatever. It disagrees. Um you just pray. You pray that they will get in the Word and see it for themselves. That they will get in His presence and see, him, see it for themselves. And if they seek Him, they will. They will. He's bringing about unity um, in His people. In His people. In His completely sold out people. He is bringing about unity because that's what it takes. You have to be all in, all in. If you're not all in, you'll find something to argue about and disagree about and try to stubbornly go on your way. So, but his word solves those issues if you'll open it up and let it open you up. So, I cling to your decrees. Lord, do not put me to shame. I pursue the way of your commands for you brought in my understanding. Teach me, Lord, the meaning of your statutes, and I will always keep them. Help me understand your instruction, and I will obey it and follow it with all my heart. Help me stay on the path of your commands, for I take pleasure in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to dishonest profit. Turn my eyes from looking at what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. 
confirm what you said to your servant, for it produces reverence for you. Turn away the disgrace I dread. Indeed, your judgments are good. How I long for your precepts. Give me life through your righteousness. And of course it goes on. That chapter in particular goes on for two, like four more pages. And it's beautiful. All the psalms aren't that long, of course. There's 150 psalms, I think. Now I gotta look and see. And they're so awesome. Yes, 150 psalms. Excellent, excellent book to read through. You've got time, you might read through the whole thing. Pray through the whole thing. It is incredible, and it never gets old. It never gets old. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Shall be filled. But yet they'll still hunger and thirst for more because there's always more of God. Um, there's always more um, for us to, you know, because He's God. His ways are going to remain higher and His thoughts higher. Even as we learn and grow in Him, there's always going to be more. So y'all be blessed and encouraged in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is an exciting word for me this morning. I'm already excited about the day and what it's going to hold. Um, may we see miracles, signs, and wonders today. Um, he is God and He is able. And I believe, Lord God, please help my unbelief. Um, in Jesus' name, He loves you. And he's waiting. He's waiting for you to come. You know, a lot of times we think we're waiting on him. Mm -mm. God's waiting on us. He's given us his word, his spirit, his son. He's given us so much. And there's so many steps <laughs> that we need to take. Um, there's always more. There's always more. And he's waiting on you and I. Have a great day.